they power on those clickers. The number one. You guys got that one. ADH. What's another name for ADH? So it stands, ADH does stand for antidiuretic hormone, but there's another name for ADH as well, too. I'll give you guys a moment to find that. It's probably where you found out that ADH was posterior. It was on the slide where it said these are the anterior hormones, these are the posterior hormones. Second one's not going to be second. 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 Second one's not uh, oxytocin is another hormone, it's a different hormone, but vasopressin is the, is the one. I'll show you guys. I'm helping you guys out here. You might want to pay attention to this. It should be on uh, page 14. ADH does stand for antidiuretic hormone, but another name for it is vasopressin. Oxytocin is a different hormone, so there's two hormones, oxytocin and ADH. But make sure you know them as both of them because you're not going to always see ADH in the answer choices. You might see vasopressin as well, too. Now, there is a class of drugs, they just call them pressin drugs. Uh, the reason they do is because what they do, the blood pressure. Well, antidiuretic hormone, so anti, meaning against or opposite, Diuretic, what do diuretics themselves make you do? Urinate more or less? Or urinate more. So anti is going to make you urinate less. So if you're urinating less, you're retaining more water. So what are you doing to blood pressure? You're going to increase blood pressure. So pressins are a class of drugs that will increase blood pressure. You go to the doctor, uh, they'll talk about that. I mean, mostly you're getting, um, you're getting drugs that are going to lower blood pressure, but there's also classes that will increase it as well, too. But that's where it's coming off of. These are vasopressins. Vaso talking about uh, blood vessels, vaso meaning vessels, pressin meaning increasing uh, pressure. All right. So there's one more thing to throw up on there as well too. MSH. This might be extra credit possibility question. Now up to this point, I told you the pituitary has two lobes. The two lobes are the what and the what? And anterior and the posterior. I briefly mentioned, but now I'll mention a little bit more. MSH is another one. This might be extra credit if I choose it. It's coming from the intermediate lobe, meaning it's between them. Some books consider the intermediate lobe part of the anterior lobe, but we'll just simply say the intermediate lobe. So MSH is coming from the intermediate lobe. What's its importance? Well, SH is the same as the SH and TSH. What's SH stand for? That's stimulating hormone. And if you look at the, I'm going to borrow this for a second here, Lauren. Look at that one page you picked up last time. You'll see MSH on that chart. It's on the other side of the thyroid hormone, that one page you picked up. MSH, what type of cells? I'll give you a moment to look at that chart. Melanocytes. Not melatonin, but what is coming out of melanocytes? Melanin. Melatonin's different. We didn't get to that one yet, but it's in the packet. What's melanin, not melatonin, but melanin have to deal with? Skin pigmentation, melanin. Melatonin, how do I not confuse them? There's serotonin, there's melatonin. Those ones deal with the brain, so they sound similar. Melanin sounds different from them, so that's the skin pigment. So MSH will stimulate the melanocytes, which are in your skin, to increase pigmentation. If somebody has cancer, 
in the pituitary gland, such as a pituitary adenoma. Adenoma is cancer, but in a gland. So if they have a pituitary adenoma, they're going to have increase of hormones stimulating from there, and they're going to end up with bronze skin as one of the classes. I think if you want to look up in your phones, uh, it might be Addison's disease is the name of it. I'm not sure you can double check it. But uh, that, you know, I'll just double check with you guys in case you're interested here. But it increases the secretion of MSH, which will increase uh, the pigmentation of the person's skin. So let's see if it's Addison's disease. Images. Addison's, maybe go back here. It's not this, I'll have to look it up later. Addison's bronze. Yeah, characteristic bronze. There it is, increased level. So they're going to end up with basically bronze skin. And you can take a look at the difference here. This looks like more tan in a sense right? because it increased the pigmentation. It, uh, uh, again, number, or, yeah, number one, the answer was D. But what other hormone other than ADH is being secreted from the posterior as well? Oxytocin, what's another name for ADH? Vasopressin. Any questions on number one? Actually, let me ask you two more questions. What's another name for the anterior pituitary? Adenal hypothesis. What's another name for the posterior? The neural hypothesis. Okay, let's do number two. That's why I asked it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's on your chart. If you look at if you look at that one picture, it says it says it on there. Okay, pituitary hormone triggers. What's the what's the abbreviation for tetraiodothyronine? T four. And what part of that means four? Tetra. Okay, good. You guys got it. Thyroid, what's SH? Simulating hormone. What part of the pituitary gland is that coming from? Good, the anterior. The what hypothesis? Yeah, the adeno hypothesis. And just remember the acronym FLAT PIG is all the anterior pituitary hormones. Number three. Click it. If you have a question at any time during any of those, just ask. Yeah, that was quick. Glucocorticoids. All right. C. A C T H. A stands for the name of the gland. What's the gland? Adrenal. But they t take the A L off and they say adrenal. And then the C and the T come together. The C refers to the the region of the adrenal gland. So what's the C? It's the cortex, so they say cortico. And then T. It, tropin means like uh, food and nourishing in a sense. So corticotropin. Any tropin hormone is usually coming from up higher in the pituitary gland. So adrenal, corticotropin, or corticotropic, and then the H hormone. If you see that H, like you see pretty much in all of those right there at the end, what class of hormones does it mean it is? Very good, it's a peptide. If it's a peptide hormone, is it water or lipid soluble? Water soluble. And if it's water soluble, it uses a second messenger. The second messenger is what? Abbreviation. Yeah, CAMP, C-A-M-P. It's gonna help you when we get to the last question then. So uh, what you guys wanna do before I keep going on is you want to make a chart. This is why I just asked you these series of questions. Is you want to make a chart. Take a paper, put it, uh, what would it be landscape, or put it, or a portrait. You want to put it sideways, so lengthwise. And then you want to make three columns. The three columns for the three different classes of, of uh, hormones. You want to put amino acids. What's another name for amino acids? Amines. Amines. Then you want to put peptides. What's another name for peptides? Proteins. And then what's the third class? Lipids. Then you want to write everything as much as you possibly can in each category. For example, peptides are chains of what? Amino acids. 
the amines, there's two amines. The two amines or the two amino acids that get changed in that category are what and what? They both start with T. Tyrosine, which makes thyroxine. Tyrosine and a little tougher one, tryptophan. Okay, then you want to decide, okay, water soluble, lipid soluble, intracellular, extracellular, cyclic AMP, no cyclic AMP. These are all things you want to put together. So I'm not going to take that time to do that with you, but what you can do is make it when you go home. If you want me to check it, I'll check it for you when you bring it to class. Or if you want just to meet with me, I'll sit down and work uh, through that chart with you. So basically I'm saying you have the opportunity to put it together. If you want to put that time in, you guys will do well. Okay, let's do number four. All right, whoever doesn't get this one really, really needs to study. Number four. It's a nice way of saying it. Oh, wow. <laughs> there we go. None of you have to study. Stop studying. Okay. Good job. I had two people in the last class. I just circled them and said, you guys need to study. All right, number five. Thyroxine is which one, by the way? T3 or T4? T3. Good, T4. One more a pivotal role in metabolic rate. This seemed to be the tough one in the last two classes, so we'll see what happened here. Uh, between C and D, that's actually what happened last time, too. It was off by one. So, discuss those with each other. I'll give you guys like a minute or two, and we'll click in in a bit. Between C and D. Yeah, catch me if you can. This is all good. Did you see it, Jeff? Oh, yeah. He changes his yeah. like, identity. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> yeah, it is. I actually heard about that. Textbooks. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, click that in again. Number five. What's his name? Frank. What? Yeah. That's crazy. The FBI made a good uh, decision to put him in jail to help him out. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. There we go. You guys got it. 
see. What page was that on? Page 11? Okay. Thanks, Chuck. So, page 11. First slide. This is the one. You found another one? This is the one that I was looking at. You have a chart on the chart? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're okay from that one, too. All right. So, you might have found out another slide as well, too. This one, as well as this one up here. It talks about it right up in that box. But another one where I asked you guys to highlight it was here, and it increases the rate of cellular metabolism. So I, I told you to highlight it last time because I forgot to highlight it. For example, if somebody is hyperthyroid, not hypo, but hyper, are they going to lose um, weight faster or slower? They're going to they're lose weight faster, so they're going to be skinnier because this increases the rate of metabolism, so it increases chemical reactions, it's going to break things down faster. So if somebody's hypothyroid, they're going to tend to gain weight faster. So that's the difference of uh, the thyroid hormone's effect inside the body. It also does a lot more. Just going back one slide from there. I also told you to make sure you got this down. Pretty much everything else in the body, skeletal system, muscular system, nervous system, is going to increase uh, those processes and the development of them. So to summarize, if somebody asks you what's thyroid hormone do, you can pretty much say everything is the big answer. And then you can get into specifics of what it does in every area. But in a general sense, it speeds up everything. So hyperthyroidism is going to be a lot. Hypo is going to be a little. Somebody asked me this question in the last class. If you guys heard about the eyes that bulge out, the exo uh, graves would be, uh, all right, yes it is graves, but this is a symptom of graves right here. It's exophthalmos, you spelled that right, right, does these big bulging eyes right here. That's hyperthyroidism, right, but graves, graves is a hyperthyroidism. There's uh, different types as well too, but that's one of the main ones. So thyroid hormone has a big effect on the body. That's why you can't live without it. If you have too much of it, you need to control it. All right, let's go to, oh, any questions with that one? You guys got it now? Okay, what number are we on here? Six? Yeah, let's do six. So remember, the adrenal gland has a cortex, and it has a what on the inside? It's a medulla. The cortex has how many regions? Three. Okay, so I'm going to draw a picture. When we finish this quiz, I'm going to draw it all out again for you guys and review it. So let's just go through what you have now. The cells of the cortex produce the aldosterone. Does anybody know which region of the cortex the aldosterone is coming from? Tough one, huh? What's the first letter? G. G. Yes, the megalosa. Zona de megalosa. We'll draw that out again when we finish this quiz. Let's do number seven. If you guys have a question, make sure you ask. You don't want to ask in front of the class, just make sure you ask me after. So we're number seven now. Zona reticularis. Is that the outermost or the innermost? Innermost. Good. Androgens. Such, what are examples of androgens? Your testosterone. Estrogen, progesterone, all the sex hormones. If you look at your chart, that shows you the lipid hormones. One category of the lipid hormones, you'll find those androgens in there, the sex hormones, such as testosterone, estrogen. Let's do number eight.
again, the medulla and the cortex for the adrenal gland, I'm going to draw those out as soon as we finish this course. Superadrenal medulla. Now this is like a two-step question. So you won't find the answer right away. You're going to have to bridge it to another chart in your packet. Number eight. Okay, so between A and E, there's enough that I'll go along with this already. So it's A, catecholamines. How do you come up with that? Well, what are the hormones that come out of the medulla? Yeah, where's the medulla here? Good, epinephrine or epinephrine. So I'll show you how to come up with this answer here. Where's medulla? <coughs> Okay, so you'd have to go to, I don't know what slide would that be, one, what is it? Well, it's slide, but, sorry, page. I'll do that, page, what is it? 14? All right, so page 14, you'll find the slide says suprarenal medulla, you will say epinephrine or epinephrine or a name for them, adrenaline and noradrenaline. Then where do you have to go? Go to the chart all the way, I think it's the third page of your packet. And it's that big chart I had for you. And you'll look on there and you'll find the epinephrine, norepinephrine, and what other hormone find, fall under catecholamines? And dopamine. These are all catecholamines. Okay, so this is the thing you guys gotta do is you gotta bridge. Right? You find your answer, right? You think about it, you look at your choices, okay, it's not there. That means it must be a certain class of hormones. So then you go back to your chart and see what class they fall under. I could even ask more questions off that. I could, I could have thrown, uh, what else could I have said that it comes off if you keep going backwards? What an answer choice. I heard it. Yeah, you can see tyrosine. You see amino acid derivatives. You can, you can see any of those choices. So as long as you organize that, like if you, even if you wanted to organize off of here, and you say these are coming out of, well actually has it right there, the suprarenal medulla, they already wrote that for you. But just some way where you kind of bridge all these things together. We go through the packet and say, oh, this connects to this, this connects to that, and then you can show it to me and I'll tell you, yeah, that's right, or yeah, that, or that's wrong, you just need to fix that, just let me know. Any questions with that one? Okay, so two more left here, do number nine. Sodium. That's the abbreviation for sodium. N A what? And there it is. Good. You guys got it. Aldosterone. Aldosterone. Is it a mineral or a glucocorticoid? You're right. Yeah. It's a mineral corticoid. What's the mineral in this case? Salt, which is sodium. What is corticoid referred to? The cortex. Glucocorticoid. Gluco referring to what? Sugar, glucose. And corticoid again? Cortex. The glucocorticoid. You guys know that one? Is that? I'll give you a second to look at it. What is the glucocorticoid? Start with a C. It's cortisol. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna organize all that in a moment right now. So just one more question first. Let's do number ten. So this is like a two three step question here. Because there's nothing in the packet that specifically says that's cyclic AMP, that's not cyclic AMP. You have to understand what type of hormone it is and then if it uses cyclic AMP or not. Okay. So 10. Good. You guys got that. Really good job. So, norepinephrine uses cyclic AMP because it's what? Soluble. Water soluble. If it's water soluble, is it gonna stay on the surface or is it gonna go inside the cell? Yeah. It's gonna stay on the surface. So we need cyclic A and P. Cyclic A and P is an example 
of what type of messenger? The secondary messenger. The first messenger being what? The hormone itself, norepinephrine. So, just to show you that, we go to McGraw Hill, under Google, you go to McGraw Hill, it's the same video I showed you, and you write endocrine, and the first search result, and then on the left, you click on animations, and you'll see epinephrine. Again, what's another name for epinephrine? Adrenaline. But norepinephrine is not the same. It's a derivative of epinephrine. Only thing is you take epinephrine and change it adrenaline. It's just two different names for the same thing. But nor, when you add nor in front of it, that's a different compound. So here it is, epinephrine or norepinephrine is going to do the same thing. Binds to the extracellular receptor. That's the purple thing it is bound to. And then, what's the name of this protein right here? It's a G protein, right? It's a, it's a gang of proteins right there. It's a G protein, and then it's going to go, and it's going to take ATP, and what's ATP going to change into? Can. Cyclic AMP. So there's a bunch of other details. Don't get lost in the alpha and the beta and the GDP and all that stuff. Later on, if you get more into it, you'll learn it more. But... Just basically, if it's extracellular receptor, which means, again, the hormone is water soluble if it's extracellular. Water soluble. It's going to use a G protein through a series of steps. It's going to take ATP and make, what's the C? Cyclic AMP. So CAMP. And that's, again, what's cyclic AMP an example of? It's a secondary messenger. Why is it secondary messenger? Because what, what's, what do we know about epinephrine in what? Like, why, why is epinephrine <coughs> not the only messenger? Yeah, it can't go through the lipid bilayer. To go through, it has to be what? It has to be lipid soluble. So you need a second messenger to take you inside the cell to do a series of reactions. In this case here, they were just showing it was producing glucose because epinephrine is adrenaline. It gives you that energy boost. It's because of all that sugar it's going to be pumping out of the cells there. But it can do a lot of different things. That's just one example of what it can do. So any questions with that, Chris? Make sure you guys still have the attendance sheet. Does anybody still need it? Still need it? Is the attendance sheet in the back over there? All right. Uh, here, I'll grab it from you. Right, so you guys can turn something off and go to, well, we're going to go to the pancreas, but I'm going to draw that adrenal gland out first. So if you want, you get a paper to draw adrenal glands. Okay, so you need it a lot. And then you guys over there after. So we'll do a little bit of adrenal gland. We'll draw that out. And then we'll talk a little bit about the pancreas. And we'll be done here. Thank you. Anybody else need it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, where do we find the adrenal gland? Top of the kidneys. So, how many do we have? Two. So, I'm just going to draw one of them again. We did this last time. I'm going to try to do it a little bit bigger. And now that we have more time. So this is just the kidney here. I didn't draw all of it. This is just the top of the kidney. And I'm just going to draw the adrenal gland a little bit larger on top here. Okay, so just like that. So the rest of the kidney is going to be down here. I just cut it off so we could zoom in here on the adrenal gland above it. So if we look at the adrenal gland, there's the inner area. This inner area is called the what? It's called the medulla. And what hormones come out of the medulla? Epinephrine and norepi. Now, what you can do here, because you know, there's not enough room, is maybe on the side, you can write the other names for epi and norepi. What's another name for epi? Adrenaline and norepi. So noradrenaline, and then just like we saw in the quiz, they're categorized as what type of hormones? This is one of the answers. Yeah. K. 
catecholamines. So off that chart, catecholamines. Why? Because there's a structure, they share a ring. When you look at their structure, that ring is a catecholamine structure. So they share that similar structure. So uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, these are catecholamines. They're in the medulla. Epinephrine is also known as adrenaline. Norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline. So you're trying to put as much of that information on there. So when you go to the choices, you're not looking for just one of them. You know the other names for them as well. So if this is the medulla, what do we call the outside area here? And how many parts to it? Okay, so the cortex has three regions to it. Just drawing some dashed lines. The outermost one is called the zona glomerulosa. Zona glomerulosa. The next zone, I'll give you guys a second here, the zona. Yeah, yeah good. Fasciculata. And the third one is called the zona, easier to pronounce here, yeah, reticularis. So I told you last time, you don't have to use this, but if you remember glomerular filtration rate, I mean, you do have your books, but GFR from outside to inside. So the way I started to help you guys to remember what's coming out of where, as I gave you that uh, fun little mnemonic, in terms of like what the hormones are regulating, in terms of sex hormones, uh, salt, or sugar. So out of those three, the glomerulosa is going to be controlling which one of those three there. Salt. The fasciculata. Sugar. And then sex hormones. So salt. What's the hormone that regulates salt? Aldosterone. What is the salt? What's the element? Yeah, Na plus. Sugar. What's that hormone that's going to be in there? Yeah, cortisol. And then uh, the sex hormones. We call them the what? Androgens. So another thing to add on there is the something corticoids. For example, the aldosterone is an example of a what corticoid? Okay. Mineral corticoid. So aldosterone is an example of a mineral because what's the mineral? Salt. The mineral is salt. Corticoid referring to coming out of the cortex. Sugar or Cortisol is an example of a what? Corticoid. Okay. It's regulating glucose. Gluco, you can write the rest of it. Glucocorticoid. And this one right here, uh, probably won't throw it on the test, but it's uh, going to be a cortico. Does anybody know it? I didn't mention it. Yeah, corticosteroid. But I'll, I'll just stick to uh, these two up here. So this is helps you to kind of organize things a little bit better. Uh, but you have to, you can even go further with this. For example, the aldosterone, aldosterone, cortisol, androgens. These are all coming out of the lipid category. So if they're coming out of the lipid category, then are they going to have intra or extracellular receptors? Intracellular receptors. But epi and norepi. They're part of amines. All amines, are they all lipid soluble or all the, are they all water soluble, the amine group? They're both, good. So it depends. This one here, uh, epi and norepi, they are what? Soluble. There's water soluble because there's only one amine that is lipid soluble. It's coming right out of the neck. Thyroxine, T4. Okay, so these are things that if you make a nice chart, it's going to be much easier for you when you get to the exam. I guarantee you almost half the exam questions you'll be able to answer out of a nice, clearly organized chart. So any questions for this year? Okay, so let's go to the pancreas. So find that in your packet. Jump around a bit.
Make sure you please power off those clickers. If somebody finds a page number for Pankers, can you just say it? Thank you. Page eight. So the pancreas, you guys know a little bit about it. You understand a few things like diabetes and there's a famous hormone that's coming out of there. What's that hormone? Insulin. So we're going to just briefly mention it. As you see, we don't have that much time, five minutes, and we're going to continue it next time. But to find the pancreas first, we have to lift up an organ. That organ is a big organ. It's going to be on the left side, not the right side. What is that? Stomach. So once you... Uh, lift up the stomach, you'll find the pancreas there. So it's inferior to it, it's also deep to it. Now, this part's important. The pancreas has an exocrine and it has an endocrine function. For something to be a hormone, it has to be secreted through what? Through the bloodstream. For something to be a hormone, it has to be secreted through the bloodstream. So the pancreas is going to be secreting hormones through the bloodstream. But that's only 1% of its function. The other 99% of it comes as an exocrine gland, which we'll talk about in the digestive system. It's going to secrete its stuff not through the bloodstream, but through ducts. You had this on your quiz last week. There's two ducts in the pancreas. What are those? The common is coming up from the, from the liver. Hepatic meaning liver. There's two ducts right in the pancreas. It's much easier. It's so easy. Yes, main pancreatic duct. Okay, and the other one, which three to ten percent of the population have, accessory pancreatic duct. So you just make sure you review those. But when we get to the digestive system, we'll bring those back up. So if it goes through a duct, through a channel, not through the blood, but just through a channel, and empties somewhere, that's exocrine. If it's going through what? It's endocrine goes to the blood, it's endocrine. So the majority of it's exocrine, so we're going to come back to this in the digestive system. But that endocrine, even though it's about 1%, it's still very important. Because, for example, if insulin's not working, what's the disease that people have? Diabetes. So it must be that 1% has to be very significant. So when you look at the pancreas, and if you're going to take a little piece of it, a little section, a little biopsy, and you put it on a microscope slide and you look, You'll see these structures called islets of Langerhans. Langerhans might be familiar to you, the sound at least, because they're Langerhans cells. They were macrophages located underneath the skin. These are different, but uh, they have this, the same guy's name who discovered them and researched them. So if we do islet of Langerhans, just to show you a picture, uh, the textbook had a zoomed in view. So when you take a look at the pancreas, and you section it, you see these little aisles. How many aisles do you see in there? There's three of them. Just those clear white areas. Here's the islet of Langerhand, here's an islet, and here's an islet. So in those islets, there's different groupings of cells. There's cells that secrete insulin, and cells that secrete glucagon, and cells that secrete other stuff as well, too. Which ones, just I want you guys to read the slide, are the ones that secrete insulin? Beta cells. So the beta cells are going to produce insulin. The alpha cells are going to secrete glucagon. Glucagon is different than glucose. Glucose is a sugar. Glucagon is a hormone. So insulin, why do people inject insulin if they don't make it naturally? What is it doing to their blood glucose levels? It's going to decrease it. So insulin acts to decrease blood glucose levels. So glucagon is going to do what? It's going to act to increase it. When would you secrete insulin naturally from your body? Before or after a meal? After a meal. So glucagon would be secreted when? In terms of like a meal. Okay. What's that? If you skip the meal. Right? So if you don't eat for a very long time, your blood glucose levels go down, you get tired, you get cranky, whatever. So your body, within an hour usually, of not eating for a while, your body will secrete glucagon and help to break down glycogen, which is something we'll talk about more next time, and then increase that level in your bloodstream, so to increase blood glucose. 
The delta cells, possible isocretic if I choose it. Just another group of cells in there. They're secreting some mannostatin. That's going to inhibit both of those. And the F cells, just another um, thing called pancreatic polypeptide. Not too much research on that. So maybe in 10 years we'll know more about it. So here's the pancreas. There's the two ducts that I was asking you earlier. There's the main pancreatic duct. And then again, in about 3 to 10% of the population, there's the accessory pancreatic duct. This is a zoomed in view of the islet of Langerhans. And you can't tell the different cells that are in here, but some of these are alpha cells. If they're alpha cells, what are they secreting? Glucagon. What cells secrete insulin? The beta cells, good. Now this is the last slide for you guys today, which we're gonna pick up on next slide. But if blood glucose levels are high, what are we releasing? Insulin to decrease the blood glucose. If they're low, like Chad said, when would they be low? If you skip a meal, then it's going to release glucagon to increase the blood glucose levels. So this is a little starter. Next time we'll draw some things out as well too. If you guys have any questions, there's still time before lab. I'll be up here. So make sure you power off your clickers.